On this episode of Carnage, we've got 17 days to get this car ready for Motor X, and we don't have all the parts. So we are trying to get this car ready for Motor X and we are still missing a few parts like uh, we don't have any rear springs, we don't have any axles, we don't have a diff centre, we don't have a tail shaft. Although we do have all the parts for the diff centre, they are all with Luke at MDR at the moment getting assembled so once we get the diff centre back we can put that in, measure up our length of our tail shaft, order that, we can all then order our axles as well because we'll know what the lengths of that, those will be. Uh, springs will be the last thing we order because we need to know what the sprung weight of the car is to get the spring rates and all that sort of stuff. These are all things that are going to happen, but we need to get this car together in its full weight configuration before we can do that. But it's not like we've been sitting on our butts either. The engine is now pretty much fully assembled, all right? It has push rods in it, it has rockers in it. I mean, I have not been sitting on my butt. Have a look at that. There we have all our rockers, all with our CHE Trunnion upgrade. It's got crow cams, push rods in it, heavy walled um, units. So yeah, it's got some good stuff in there. There's also some stuff underneath I'd like to show you as well. Let's get it up in the air and we'll show you that. So underneath we have our RTS sump a fabricated sump and our oil adapter that's all bolted in place now permanently. Some gasket, of course, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, RTS billet flex plate. We have our all fast converter in there. We have our all fast power glide as well. We have an RTS trans pan, which I've drilled and tapped for a temp sensor as well. Um, so things are happening. <sighs> I mean, Everything takes time and takes more time than you'd think and especially when you're filming it, it takes more time again. But yeah, it is all coming together, but we are coming towards the end of it and hopefully it won't take us too much longer to get this thing fully together and well, running. So today I'm gonna to be throwing some sensors in there, get our starter in place, start putting all the wiring in permanently yeah, let's get this thing sorted. Let's get it ready because uh, we're running out of time. All right, let's get things started by fitting our crank sensor. People who know LSs will be screaming at me right now and saying, you've got a 58 tooth wheel in there and this is a black sensor, which means it's a 24 tooth. Well, apparently they went to black again late in the range. So the gray sensor is black just to confuse things. But anyway, it is for a 58 tooth. And we will pop it straight here in the side of the block. Okay. All right, so it's important that it's, uh, we do this now because we can't get it in there with this starter motor in place. So once we do this, we can put our starter motor in there. And all is good with the world. Now we've got the engine in there for what is hopefully the last time. We can get the lift plate off there, put in our valley plate, put in our intake, all that stuff. We have shown you the uh, ProFlow valley plate before, but it is such a sexy piece, we'll show you again. And has a full O-ring, so it doesn't need a gasket. So yeah, that goes right there. So now we have the oil pressure sensor. Yeah. 
Now we have the cam sensor that goes in the front cover. So this is, say, a Gen 4 based engine, right? So all your engines like LS1s, they're Gen 3s. Uh, Gen 3s have cam sensor in the back of the engine behind the intake manifold. Gen 4 has it in the cam cover up the front. So the other good way of telling Gen 3 and Gen 4 is Gen 4 will generally have drive-by-wire, Gen 3 will have throttle cable. So, yeah. All right, I'll we'll slide this in the front. And the last of the factory sensors we'll be using is the temp sensor, which goes in the front up here on the cylinder head. No doubt someone's about to write me a sternly worded comment about uh, what about the map sensor. Well, we're using external map sensor, this five bar Howtec unit, and we'll be running a line from the sensor block to the manifold for that. But yeah, so we've got oil, water, crank, cam. They're our factory GM sensors we'll be using, and then Obviously, we'll be using a lot of uh, external aftermarket sensors for all the other fancy stuff, the race car stuff. But yeah, that's a good start. All right, let's get that intake manifold on. So before we put our intake manifold on, we're going to just install our little O-ring seals around the ports. They're already preformed into rectangles, which makes it nice and easy. Cut our exhaust gaskets off the packaging. We've sent our exhaust manifolds off to race coatings to get coated and they're back. They look amazing. We'll show you them in a sec. Fresh out of the packet. So our pipes look amazing. We've uh, coated them in this black race coatings treatment. It's good for like 1300 degrees, I believe, Celsius. Uh, it's a little bit damp at the moment because I had to, uh, we got them coated before we drilled all these holes. So I had caps on here, it got coated. And then after the uh, coating was done, pulled all the caps off and then I drilled the holes for our thermal couples. And obviously had to use some uh, lubricant in there to aid in that. So just wiping the excess lube away. So it's important to note that the gaskets can go on, well, either way, but only one way is right. If you put it on right, all the holes will line up, including these two in the middle. If you get it wrong, five of the six holes, actually, nope, the two center ones won't line up. So that's how you'll know when you try and do your center bolts and they don't line up. Ask me how I know. Been here, done that, rode that pony before. All right, so that's the correct way. Save that one for the other side. Uh, ah, look at that. Some titanium studs from ProFlow. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is correct. Very goodly. Bit of anti-seize for the threads. I mean, these are titanium studs going into alloy, so don't want them galling up or anything like that. The beauty of titanium though, besides it's lightweight, well, 
let's face it, we're not saving too much weight with an exhaust stud, but they don't rust, you know. They're not gonna uh, snap off in your head. They're not gonna rust into the head. You can uh, use them and reuse them reliably. And they're pretty cool too. Put the two outside ones in first. Gasket on. One down. Right. All the holes line up. Okay, here we go. So outside stud only because the inner studs won't allow us to put this on. So each stud has an Allen key socket in the head, so we'll just nip them up. Okay, right, that one's on, let's have a look at the other side. Gonna be a problem. Right, well, when the boys made the pipes, we had the electric water pump on there, which didn't have those fittings. So, what we're gonna to have to do is pull out those pipes and get, uh, get someone to weld up the, the fittings. And if we need fittings, we can always drill and tap at a later date you know, at a 90 degree angle. But yeah, we're gonna have to lose those pipes. It's not something we haven't done before. For example, here's the water pump we used on the Mazda all those years ago. So we even had to move the thermostat housing because that's where the belt used to run, right down through there. So move the outlet to there and sealed up those pipes on the end. Now we could use this, but it is old and crusty and we prefer to use the, the new ProFlow piece, but we'll just modify that instead. Bugger. Well, no time like the present. Might as well take it off now and get it modified. We don't have that much time. So let's make it not a problem. That works perfectly. Right, so we've had some success and some failure with our water pump pipes. The first one, slide hammer knocked it out real easy. The second one, the slide hammer snapped it off, which is weird because it didn't put any side load on it at all. It just, yeah, snapped it off pretty cleanly though. So what I might do is put the pump in our saw, our band saw, and we'll just slice that extra boss off basically. And then we'll get it welded up. Um, but as you can see, it clears the pipe really well. So yeah, I think, um, I think we'll just cut that whole little section off and then get it welded up. Um, this is what modifying cars is all about.
So I figure it is time to do our hubs and our brakes on our diff. Um, yeah, once we do this, we can actually put wheels on the car and it'd be good to be able to get the car off the hoist so I can then open up inside and get in the cab and do the insulation that I'm going to do and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, let's get this done. Need to grease some bearings, put some seals in. And thankfully, there are comprehensive instructions for all that right here. Disc brakes should only be installed by someone experienced and competent in the installation of disc brakes. Okay. These are our handbrake assemblies and mounting brackets for calipers. Alright, so this side, that will go on like so. Got to say, it is pretty cool that these uh, handbrake units with their brake shoes and springs and everything all come pre-assembled because anyone who's done brake shoes in a car knows what a pain in the balls it can be. So yeah, that is pretty cool. It's actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. Big bearing, it's going to take a fair bit of grease. Wow. Okay, they are torqued up. All right. Whoa, that's a bit heavier now. All right. There we go. Right, so we have our hub and our rotor attached to the diff. As we mentioned before, this is what they call a full floating hub in that the axle and the hub are separate units. So we can slide an axle in there. So 35 spine axle can be slid into there and then your little cap goes on the end, seals that up. So that way, if you happen to snap an axle, you don't lose the wheel, you know? I mean, losing wheel is pretty bad, but uh, losing wheel off a high horsepower drag car can be, well, deadly. So 
let's not have that happen. Anyway, let's throw a caliper on there to complete the set and then we'll move on to the other side. Mmm, pretty. Look at that. Slide that into there. Slide that into there. Pin goes in. Simple as that. Because we've had our greasy hands all over the rotors, just going to give it a bit of a spray, brake cleaner. Wow, it's like it was made for it or something. Everything fits together so nicely. It's awesome. I love it when parts fit. Yep, that's great. Right, time for the other side. So we have our brakes on, we have our wheels on. Um, I was about to just throw a fuel pump into this so I could throw the fuel tank in, but I pulled the uh, factory sender unit out and found that everything's rusty. And uh, when we have a look inside the tank, it's definitely pretty rusty inside there. So um, yeah, I don't really want to use this tank, but I have found a solution. Over the course of the build, a few people have suggested that uh, maybe I try a fuel tank out of like a VU, VX, VY. Um, it is not a drop-in fit, okay? And so I happened to go down to Ramsdale Wreckers in Pakenham and picked up a tank for a good price so I could give it a try. And it seems to be a workable solution. Like I said, it is not a drop-in fit, all right? So don't come screaming to me when you have problems because there are problems. So, this is the tank out of a VU Commodore U. Um, you've got to cut the mounts off the outside of the tank. Um, you've got to do a lot of little trimming. You need to do some panel beating and bashing and stuff like that, but you can make it work. And it's worth doing because not only is it a bigger tank, but the pump drops in straight through the top. Now I've also replaced the factory pump with a little ProFlow pump there. So it's going to have high volume and flow and we're going to use this to fill our surge pot and then the surge pot's going to draw those uh, three Hellcat pumps which won't be running all the time. So one Hellcat pump will be running all the time to feed the engine and then the other two will come in at say you know 10 pounds or five pounds or something something like that you know when we start making boost the other two pumps will come in but this pump will run all the time and one of those hellcat pumps will run all the time so and the beauty of this is like i said it drops in straight through the top which makes replacement easy just spring spring loads down replacement easy and um yeah it's just a better system than what it was on the VS tank where the pump goes in through the front and all that sort of stuff. So much happier with that. Took a little bit of stuff around. Like I said, there's probably a day's work, you know, in just screwing around, measuring. I've had that tank in and out 15 times to make it fit. But now that it does fit, we're sorted. And while the hatch will be close to the top, it does actually go on and it will close down. So yeah. 
It's been a good little swap. So, the ute's getting there. There's still a lot to do, but yeah, we are seeing kind of the end of the rainbow. And hopefully, she'll make it to Motor X. Well, it'll make it to Motor X one way or the other, but I'm hoping she'll be actually running and driving and drive into there under its own steam. So, that's only a few weeks away, but uh, yeah, we're gonna hook in, get it done, and you're gonna see it all on future episodes of Carnage.